poor Belgium, as, as, as they literally said back then, was kind of a doormat. But it, it was a noble doormat. Belgium was really the gun-making capital of the world back in the late 19th century, early 20th century. Fabrique Nationale was set up in 1889 to produce the Belgian service rifle. And Fabrique Nationale got lucky because they partnered with John Moses Browning on pistol designs. And what happened is a series of handguns uh, that were developed not only for commercial sale, but also used by the Belgian military. The first Browning FN partnership was the 1899 pistol, and a modified form of that gun was adopted by the Belgian military in 1900 as the model 1900. The FN 1900 uh, is a early semi-automatic pistol design right at the very, very beginning of the 20th century, right when the semi-automatic pistol is beginning to develop. It worked well, it was a reliable little pistol, looks a little bit odd by modern standards, but uh, back then nobody knew what a semi-automatic pistol was supposed to look like, so they could make them look however they wanted and however they thought would function. The thing I find most interesting about the 1900 is the low barrel. Browning uh, uh, had the idea of putting the spring of the recuperator on top of the barrel, which lowered the axis of the barrel to just above the hand and made the gun very handy for that reason, although it was uh, soon superseded by later and better uh, Browning designs. When you take a look at the uh, pistols that were made in Belgium, uh, FN and others, and we're talking about guns of the Great War, uh, the whole situation started uh, with a Browning Belgian-made handgun in the hands of Gavrilio Princep in Sarajevo in June of 1914 uh, because it was an FN pistol that killed the Archduke and, uh, and, his, and his wife. That started the, uh, the First World War. Belgium, the, the military itself, uh, adopted the 1900 Browning. The, the 1903 uh, FN pistol is a very uh, sleek Art Deco design, well before its time. In August 1914, the arms-making region of Belgium, Liège in particular, Fabrique Nationale, uh, was overrun by the Germans. So you have the Belgian army penned into a corner of its own country. Well, with no access to FN, uh, the Belgian government had to look for guns somewhere, and they looked to Colts manufacturing in Connecticut. And Colts was in production of the Model 1903 hammerless pistol. The great thing about a John Moses Browning design is they just always seem to work. Uh, it doesn't have to be a 1911. The little hammerless pocket Colts work very, very well. And in the hand, they are a wonderful gun for their day. Fed by a detachable box magazine, blowback operated. Just a wonderful little gun. Few countries uh, would bear the brunt of the war and shoulder uh, the load of, uh, of devastation uh, that Belgium would see during the war. Entire cities uh, completely reduced to rubble, but it was Liège, uh, Herstal, uh, that was providing most of the world with the long arms and side arms that they were currently using. The French, apart from guns that they purchased from foreign suppliers uh, were always kind of behind the curve on handguns. There was always something a little quirky about them or antiquated about them or uh, underpowered about them or they just, until they adopted the, the, 19, the Mac 1950, it's not unfair, I think, to say that the French never had a really good handgun. The standard sidearm of French forces in 1914 uh, was the model 1892 revolver. Now this is uh, a very advanced for Europe at that time because it's actually a double action uh, revolver uh, with a cylinder that actually opens. So instead of a, a fixed uh, cylinder that you have to pop the cartridges out one at a time, this is a swing out cylinder revolver. The gun uh, was made at saint Etienne. They are, are generally uh, very nice. The main drawback to the use of the 1892 is the fact that it was underpowered. 
that little uh, eight millimeter cartridge uh, isn't going to uh, to compete with the others uh, of the time period. It was uh, literally obsolete before it was issued. Uh, the oldest revolver in their inventory at that time that was used during the war was uh, the Modell 1873. Uh, this is a, a Chemlo uh, Dovigny based design. It has a fixed frame, uh, six shot cylinder, uh, loading gate on the right side, chambered for an 11 millimeter French rim revolver cartridge. You got to look at this era, 1873, that's when the single action army was introduced, the single action version. Colt came out with their double action in 1878, and in many ways this, uh, this French, 1873, uh, made five years before it, is a more reliable, uh, sturdier, uh, just better designed guns than some of the early American double action designs. The gun for the French represented something that they hadn't really taken into consideration before. Being very martial and a, uh, a long history of uh, pomp and ceremony, uh, the, the significant display of authority by an officer was his sword. And that changes at this point. It now becomes his sidearm. That's that symbol of authority. And, and so this sees reluctant at first, but then great and wide acceptance later on. The French look south to the Spanish, in particular to the arms-making region, uh, Basque region around Ibar. And they started contracting for vast quantities of blowback-operated 32 caliber pistols. It was the French hunger, the French demand uh, for pistols, for the trenches, for, as the, the French uh, call them, uh, trench sweepers, um, that really the Spanish arms industry just boomed during World War I. And my understanding that is eventually there were nearly 50 different firms supplying ruby pistols to the French government. Uh, there were quality problems. There were also problems that uh, uh, these parts really weren't standardized and interchangeable from one firm to another, going right down to the magazines. Uh, you, the magazine from one manufacturer may not work in the Ruby uh, pistol by another manufacturer. Eventually, the French said, you got to start marking your company name on the magazine so we know which pistol it might have a chance of working in. It's basically uh, a counterfeit, a copy of the Browning 1903, uh, one of the best all-around 32 pocket pistols I think has ever been manufactured. I said best all-around pocket pistols, not best all-around service gun for use in the trench. It's a 32 caliber for gosh sakes. Uh, this is not a man-stopping round to be used in combat against uh, against your opponents which have nine millimeter parabellum or 11 millimeter. This is a much weaker pop gun compared to what else was being used in the trenches. But it's what was available. 